Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our third example of how to find the convolution of two functions, f and g. f is defined as a unit step function. It becomes equal to 1 when time passes 0. That's what I was looking for and remains 1 forever. So it's the unit step function. g of t is a wedge. It starts at 0 and goes up to value of 1 in the span from 0 to 1. Now, the convolution, the equation, is that f convolved with g is equal to the integral from 0 to t of f of tau, the dummy variable, times g of t minus tau, d tau. We're going to need that one now because you can see that in this example it's not as simple. The height of the wedge is not a constant. So how do we deal with it graphically? Well, we'll see in just a moment. But the approach is still the same. We first must fold the second function and again, it's the property of the convolution is commutative, so we could do either one. It just makes a lot more sense in this case to fold over g rather than f, but we could do it both ways. So you're going to fold over g, so the wedge is now like this. So g of t becomes g of minus tau. We're now going to use a dummy variable for time tau. And then we begin to slide the wedge that we just folded over. And remember, folding simply means it's the mirror image about the vertical axis. Now we begin to slide in such a way that the front point is t and the back straight edge here is t minus 1. Remember, the wedge is only one unit wide at the bottom. So now we begin to slide, and by definition, the convolution is equal to the height of the first function times the height of the second function times the amount of the overlap. But since the height is not constant, it's better that we use this definition. Now over here, we don't have a problem because here the overlap will be the average area here because if this is the height here, which is 1, and the width here is 1, then the area of the wedge is equal to 1 half. So we simply multiply the height of the unit function, which is 1, times the area of the wedge. And we can see here that f convolved with g simply is equal to 1 half. It's simply the product of the overlap of the two functions. But here we need to use the definition, the integral. So let's go ahead and do that. f convolved with g is equal to the integral. Now the limits are going to be from 0 to t. The lower limit, it starts at 0, and the upper limit is at t. So we're going to integrate from 0 to t. Turns out it's the same limits as what we have over there. f of tau. Now, f of tau is right here. That's always equal to 1. It doesn't change, so that's easy, 1. But what about g of t minus tau? The height here is defined by this line. So it's the vertical height right here, and it's going to be a function. Now, notice that you can think of this as a y equals mx plus b type of equation. y is equal to mx plus b, where we have an intercept and we have a slope. In this case, you can see that the intercept will be equal to t because whatever the value this is, this also has to be t. So when this is t this way and this is t this way. And that doesn't stop. You can see here that whatever the value is for t over here, that will be the same as where this line will cross the vertical axis. So we can say that the intercept is going to be t and the slope is going to be a minus 1 times the variable, which is tau. So that means that the equation, the vertical height y, or in this case, the vertical height here, can be defined as, let's see, here we have the intercept, which is t minus 1 times the slope, which is tau. So this defines the height of this line right here. And then we multiply the times d tau. And so we can integrate this and then get the convolution of the portion from time equals 0 to time equals 1. So when we multiply this out, this is equal to, and let me get some more room here, this is equal to the integral from 0 to t of t minus tau times d tau. Remember that in this case the t is simply a constant, it's not a variable, the variable is the dummy variable tau. So now when we integrate that we get the following, this is equal to t times tau minus tau squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to t. We plug in the upper limit, we get t times t, which is t squared, minus t squared over 2. And of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0, so we don't have to worry about that. t 
t squared minus t squared over 2 is equal to 1 half t squared. So the convolution of f and g for the region from 0 to 1 is equal to 1 half t squared. Once t gets to be past 1 and beyond, at that point, for t greater than 1, the convolution is simply equal to 1 half, 1 times the area of the triangle, and that would be equal to 1 half. If you want to graph that, what does that look like? Well, let's see. We have a little room here. We can do that right here. So we're going to graph the convolution. So this is going to be f convolved with g. And the variable here is t. You can see that from 0 to 1, it's a parabolic equation. 1 half t squared. So from 0 to 1. When t is equal to 1, the convolution is equal to 1 half. So this would be 1 half when we have reached the value of 1 over here. And then after that, the convolution remains a constant at 1 half, and so the convolution continues on like this. So this graph here represents the convolution of f and g. And that's how we do that graphically and using the definition of the convolution. And that's how it's done.